Hi there everyone and welcome to this video. Today we will be talking about fixed assets and uh, how you can set up a new fixed asset on your Business Central environment. So uh, today we'll just do the fixed asset record setup, um, but in other videos we will do things like how you can acquire a fixed asset, how you can depreciate, uh, write down, sell and uh, basically do other fixed asset type transactions. Um, but for now, let's just go ahead and set a new fixed asset up. So what I'm going to do is from my home screen here, I'm going to go to finance and I'm going to go into fixed assets. OK, so this basically shows me the list of fixed assets that I have in my environment right now. Um, so I don't have any, but I'm going to go ahead and set up a new fixed asset here. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is let's just say show more and we'll run through filling in all of the different fields um, that you would do here on the fixed asset card. Um, so let me go in and just put in a name for my fixed asset. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add a fixed asset class code. Um, so before I go ahead and do that, if I drop down on here, I'm just going to explain sort of what is the fixed asset class code. OK, so the field is basically used to uh, break up or report on our fixed assets. So uh, very simply, um, you can have uh, an FA class code set up as you like, but typically um, they are set up as financial, intangible and tangible. OK, so that's typically the type of setup that you would do in your fixed asset class code. Now, for this particular fixed asset, let's go tangible. And what this will do is it will filter down the subclass codes that I've got here on my fixed asset card. So it works in the same way, basically, as some other areas of Business Central. You know, I'm thinking about the chart of accounts where you have your account categories and account subcategories. Um, this works in very much the same way. So if I go into my FA subclass code, um, you can see here that I have a filter on the class code um, field here and that is the um, filter to um, tangible. So it's filtered to tangible um, and that's because I selected tangible as the FA class code. And this then allows me to pick an FA subclass code. Um, so I can pick one of these here. But let me just quickly show you if I change this to intangible. Now, when I click on the FA subclass, it changes the options because it's filtered to FA class code intangible. OK, so there's a link between those two fields and you can set them up the way that you want to. This is just a demonstration environment. OK, so FA class code is tangible. FA subclass code is vehicles. And what I'll say here is look on the FA subclasses. I'm selecting vehicle and we've also got in this particular configuration a default fixed asset posting group defined of vehicles as well. So when I press OK on this, what that does is it adds the fixed asset subclode, subclass code, sorry, but it also adds the posting group to my new fixed asset, right? So it's just a, an easier way for you to add this data to um, the record in BC. So um, the FA location code um, is basically just um, typically where we store this particular fixed asset. So if it's something that you can fill in, um, I guess you can use this for reporting um, if you wanted to. So um, it's there if you want to um, and sort of add a location, you can add a new one there and you can just use it to say this is where the fixed asset is usually kept. So we also have the um, budgeted asset, which we'll do another video on. So uh, you can basically uh, mark a fixed asset as a budgeted as asset, and then you can use sort of different reports to, to view your budgeted asset values if uh, you wanted to use the system to do that. Um, the serial number is um, exactly that. So you can put in a serial number. I've just put in the numbers one to eight here. Um, it's up to us if we want to use that field. So the main asset and component um, of main asset, you can use these fields to link a fixed asset together. 
Um, now, potentially, I mean, this is a car. You could have a, a component of this car, which is a trailer, for example. I'm not sure if you'd attach a trailer to um, this type of car, um, but that's how you can use these two fields, right? So main asset or component basically means that your, your asset is a main asset or a component asset, and where it's a main asset, you would see um, main asset, the main asset number up here, where it's a component, um, you would see the main asset number up here. So you can link two fixed assets together. Perhaps we'll do a, another video on that in the future. So search description um, basically just copies across from the description, but I can change this if I want to. Uh, responsible employee looks up my employees table. So if I say select from full list here, it shows me my employees and it's just showing me the employee if that's relevant, that is relevant for our fixed asset. Okay, so you can also mark uh, a fixed asset as inactive. So um, this doesn't really affect any of the postings to the fixed asset itself. It just means that it's currently inactive, right? It's out of service. It's no longer being used or whatever means uh, sort of that, 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 that it's inactive right now. But you can still post transactions, right, against the fixed asset if it's inactive. <clears throat> so we also have blocked, um, which is basically the same as inactive, but it also means you can't post transactions to this particular fixed asset. So you can't purchase it, you can't depreciate it and so on, right? So um, just want to be careful with there. Um, so we also have acquired, which uh, is uh, not an editable field there. So that is automatically marked by the system when I have acquired my fixed assets. So uh, again, we'll do a separate video on that um, just so you can see how we can acquire a fixed asset. Last date modified just tells me the date which this particular fixed asset was last modified. So it doesn't tell me um, what was changed, um, but I can track that using other areas of the system, but it's just telling me the last date that this um, fixed asset was modified. Now, coming down to depreciation book, I'll just quickly run through. We've got a default depreciation book and posting group. Um, so I'll do separate videos on the de the depreciation books that we can set up in BC. The posting groups, uh, we do have a separate video on that. I won't go into details on how you'd set that up, but this is basically a lookup, if I say show details, to the FA posting groups table, okay? So the fixed asset posting groups table, and it's basically where I can define my GL accounts uh, from my chart of accounts that I want to use um, when I'm doing different types of transactions. So my maintenance expense account here is 62210. Uh, if I scroll down here, I've got a few other accounts that I can um, set up um, and basically use uh, when we're running uh, maintenance entries, when we're running depreciation entries and so on, right? So um, yeah, you can use the posting setup to control postings from your fixed asset ledger to your general ledger. So then we've got depreciation method. Um, set up a few of these in the past, but I guess the most popular is straight line. Um, but we do have a few other um, depreciation methods that we can use. Again, we'll do a separate video. I'll just leave it as straight line for now. Um, depreciation starting date is when we want to start the depreciation on this particular fixed asset. So I'm going to set that to the 1st of March. Um, and then I'm going to say, the uh, life of this fixed asset or the number of depreciation years is 10 and see what that does is it fills in the depreciation ending date for me. So it takes the starting date, adds the number of depreciation years, and then it gives me my depreciation ending date. So I get a notification now to tell me that we are ready to acquire the fixed asset. So I can choose acquire. And what that does is it sort of brings up a wizard in which I can put some details and that will basically prepare a journal for me in the background, which will acquire the fixed asset. But we'll do a separate video on that um, so we can talk in the other video about how we can acquire a fixed asset in Business Central. 
So the book value here just shows me the current value of the fixed asset. So it's not acquired right now, as we know, so it's currently zero. But I can drill down into here, and this shows me the FA ledger entry, so the fixed asset ledger entries. So you'll have your um, acquisition cost, your depreciation, any appreciation, um, etc., will be posted into this screen. Now, a few of the fields on here, we've got depreciation table code, um, that's used um, in particular scenarios in conjunction with our depreciation methods, as is the half year convention, okay? Um, so if I go add more depreciation books just finally on here, you can associate with a single fixed asset, multiple depreciation books if you wanted to do that, so I can drop down on here. I don't have an additional depreciation book in here, but I can associate that with one fixed asset if I wanted to do that. Okay, so very quickly, I'm just gonna run through maintenance, uh, the maintenance tab on our fixed asset. So we have uh, the vendor number, um, and I guess that's the vendor number from whom we purchased this particular fixed asset. Just looks up my vendor table. We've got the maintenance vendor, um, who basically performs uh, maintenance on this particular fixed asset. So that is just a lookup for both of those fields to my um, vendor table in Business Central, and I can assign those vendors as I want to. Then I've got the under maintenance flag, which I guess is similar to inactive. You know, it just depends how we want to use BC, but we can mark a fixed asset as under maintenance there. And we've got the next service date and warranty date, which can be filled in. So they're date fields. I can put these in if I want to, um, just um, to, to reference, you know, my next service and when I have warranty on my fixed asset until. Then um, I can, if I want to, store my insurance details in Business Central. This fixed asset isn't currently insured on Business Central. Obviously, it might be insured off system. Um, I can choose to record that within Business Central if I want to. So again, we'll do that in another video. Um, and just finally here, I can put in some details if I wanted to on my fixed asset against interest that, okay? So if we needed to report interest that against our fixed assets, we could put in those details here and that would then allow us to report efficiently on this fixed asset within interest that. Okay, so that is basically how we would set up a fixed asset in Business Central. Um, this was the manual setup of a fixed asset. Obviously, you can interface to another system. You know, you might have another fixed asset management software which manages the, the, your sort of fixed assets. Um, you could set up fixed assets via integration to something like a software like that if you wanted to. But this was just uh, to demonstrate how we can set up a new fixed asset card. And uh, as I say, we'll do some other videos on um, what else you can do with a fixed asset. But that's everything I wanted to show you for this particular video. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.